With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, my beloved brethren, we shall be reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 24. Chapter 24 and verse 32. Matthew 24, 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near the, at the doors. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. For of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, unto the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mule, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Surely I say to you that he will make him rule over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on that day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two and appoint him in him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in the vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should, should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. From the parable of the fig tree know that her branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. The truth is, my brethren, that and the wheat, when they are planted, they know that harvest is near. When the farmer sows a seed, he says, because he knows the time will come of harvest in which the life of the seed will not continue, it will end. They were sown, they grew, they sprouted, they came to the surface, they formed leaves, they formed flowers, they formed fruit. 
the fruit increased, and all these things just for the harvest. And the Lord says, in the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, that he went out to sow his seed. And wheat did spring forth, but also weeds, because the enemy sows his will. And so this life, my brethren, in this life, there will be the good fruit, the wheat, but also the weeds. Because there is a good sower, but there's also a bad sower. But both will be harvest. But what is important, even though their life is the same and quite next to each other, really, right next to each other. In the parable, the angels say, should we go and uproot the weeds? And he says, no. Because if you uproot the weeds, you uproot the good fruit also, and the wheat. But the end will come. And the end of the weeds is fire. They will be harvested, but for the fire. But the end of the wheat will be harvested, yes, but for the barns of the Lord. These are people. That's who we are. That's humanity. And we cannot flee from the Word of God, no matter how much we want to. We have been tangled and tangled now with the Word of God. But it's good that we are tangled with it, because we know that God is proclaiming a prophecy, revealing the present and the future, and He reveals the end also. And when you see all these happening, and all the signs have been fulfilled, I don't think there are any left. The only thing that's left is sin to increase to its full, and it's getting there speedily. But there's also another sign, my beloved brethren, that the wrath of God will start from the house of God. And this is a sign of the end also. Because the Lord must clear up His threshing floor. He must clear things up, cleanse things through, before the harvest comes. His church, He must cleanse. There are no weeds in the church. The weeds are in the world. In the church, there is only the good seed. And this good seed, the Lord must cleanse. I am the true vine, the Father says. My Father is a farmer. You are the branches. Every branch that doesn't bring forth good fruit, it is cut off and thrown into the fire. Let not this impress you, my beloved brethren, when the Lord comes and takes people out. It is written, especially in these later days, when the wrath of God, the judgment of God, the judgment of God will start from the house of God. He must cleanse the threshing floor. He must separate. The scandals must leave. All who do not bring forth fruit shall be uprooted. All who do bring forth fruit, even a little bit, the father, the farmer will take care of them so they can bring forth more fruit. And what is important, my beloved brethren, is in this church, who are we? What are we? Our job isn't what God is doing to other people. He is God. It's his vineyard, it's his field, he does whatever he wants. We only pray for the Lord to show mercy and grace. But in this field, who God, in which God cleanses, cuts off, casts out, throws away, frees, in this field, you are in there. And so am I. And you should look at yourself, and I should look at myself. It is necessary for us look to look at ourselves. It is completely necessary. Because the Bible says, 
that day will come, which will be like the former days, like the days of Lot and the days of Noah. One will be taken up, the, lift, the other left behind. But who is raptured and who is left behind? And I persist in this. Who is it for me to look on the other side? For who is going to be raptured is for me to look inside of me, inside of me. Will I be those who will be raptured or those who are left behind? And something more now. Will I be those who will obtain the glory of God until the Lord comes to rapture His church? where one is taken up and the other left behind? Or will I be in those who suffer and make other people suffer? Don't forget, let's never forget, if you do not forgive with all your heart those who treated you unjustly, those who did you harm, but your heart is full of bitterness and you always take out and take out bitterness, Gossip, condemnation, judgment. Then there are the torturers. And God cannot be mocked. Whatever person will sow, this he will reap. Everybody's work will be tested by fire. All the work, and yours, and my work also. The work of all will be tested by the fire. And that's why it's important how you build now before you are tested by the fire. If your work is built by gossip, judgment, condemnation, scandals, offenses, then it will be burnt up. Sins, bitterness, evilness, wickedness, desires that are bad, it will be burnt to a crisp. And maybe you might be saved through the fire. But if, my beloved brethren, today, today we make a decision and we must make this decision. It is necessary for us to make this decision, to make these decisions in our lives. For us to build with gold, silver, with precious stones. For us to build from the Word of God becoming just and fleeing from unrighteousness, not judge it, flee from it. The Word of God says, if you see a bad thing, flee from it. Don't bang it over the head with something, it's not your job. If you see something that's evil, leave, flee from it, run, and be careful. Just in case your heart creates a stench, your heart gets defiled. Because what is important, it's not if you have good vision and you can see the wicked things, but if you have a good heart, cleanse and you love your um, the Lord. These two things don't go together. They cannot walk together. Whether you love God and everything work together for good for you and your heart is cleansed with the blood of Jesus Christ. It is cleansed and it is cleansed and it is purified and it will be purified until the end because you repent. You return. You ask for mercy and grace from God. And you become just among your generation. My brethren, I want, and forgive me for saying this, and you understand why I'm saying it, I want to be just among you all. I want to be righteous, but I want you to want it also. For you to be just among us all. For God to see you in that way, to say, He is just before my eyes, among all my people. I don't want to be unrighteous among my generation, because you are my generation. That's why I want to forgive you, for me to be able to repent, for me to be able to humble myself, for me to be able to bear you with a heart that's full of love. I want to see you and to think of you as people who are highly esteemed, I want to build with silver and gold and precious stones. I want my words to be full of love, full of praise, full of compassions. I repeat, full of love. 
love will take us to heaven, my brethren. Not judgment. For my heart to be full of the joy of the Holy Spirit. So I can be strong. I want my meekness to be revealed to all. And not only in the church, but also outside. And I want for these things, for all of us to want. For us to be a church that breaks the eggshell that we're living in. For us to be a church that will leave from the vapors of the Holy Spirit. So we enter into the fire of the Holy Spirit and to witness rain falling down from heaven. A church which the Lord will make us holy, perfect, blameless, truly without a spot or a wrinkle or anything like that. A church ready for the rapture of the church. A rapture which God, Christ will do. But we are the church. You, you, you and I. I want to love you as Christ loved me. I want to know the love of Jesus which abounds over any kind of knowledge. And I love about all of you. But I want to have the love of Christ that overcomes everything that I know about you. I know bad things. I don't mean it, of course. But I want the love of Jesus to overcome the knowledge that I have about you. About you. For each person. For everyone. For everything. I want this love of Jesus, my brethren. I want it. I want to break this eggshell which holds me my own knowledge. Even the knowledge that God has revealed to me. The burden so I cannot breathe. But it will come out and breathe. The Holy Spirit will breathe inside of it. Will change it. Will turn towards heaven and see the black clouds proclaiming the rain that's about to come. Thunder and lightning of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to remain in the ark. I want to leave. But when the fulfillment of time does come, when the end comes, then the end depends on us, my brethren. Keep watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. You don't know what time the end is coming. Watch therefore and wait the Lord to come as a thief in the night. And if we knew when the thief would come, we would not be asleep. But we don't know when the thief does come. And we must, we must be always ready, keeping watch, awake. So who from among us is a faithful and wise servant? whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Who is it? Are you my brother? Has the Lord established you among your generation to be perfect and for you to give them good food? Not to poison them, but to give them good food. Holy, pure, comfort, spiritual exhortations, truth, power, compassions, faith. To be among your generation is light. And this, my brethren, is a person who has believed in the sermon of Noah. Who said, in a few days everything will be destroyed. Today, who believes the sermon of Christ? The end of all things is at hand. Who believes it? Whoever believes it, turns his eyes towards his own soul and cares 
looking towards the heavenly places and the eternal places for the salvation of his soul. Whoever doesn't believe it starts to look around and says, and says, and talks, and judges, and gossips, and condemns, and talks, and talks, and talks, and talks, and talks, and talks. Death. But whoever believes that the Lord is coming, we don't know the time and hour. But when He will come, He will rapture a church that's holy, sanctified. Out are the adulterers, out are the liars, out are the gossipers, out are the fornicators. My beloved brethren, it's been inside. Because when you don't believe it, and that's a characteristic, you start to beat your fellow servants. The worst beating that someone could suffer is by words. There's no worse beating than when you use the word. Consequently, in Jeremiah, in the prophet Jeremiah, they said, Let's go and rebuke him with our words. Beat. And then to eat and drink with those who eat and drink. And to enjoy in this world his flesh. And the desires of his flesh. The desires of what he sees. And the pride of life. Judging that greater wealth is a temporary enjoyment of sin. Than the eternal treasures of heaven. I do not know if I am a wicked or a wise servant, but I can understand it from my life. If I'm strict, angry, harsh, without gentleness, but with harshness and with an unrepented heart, the word of God says you will reap, if you are, anger, wrath, sorrow. But if your heart is full of love, compassions, you're peaceful, you're meek, humble, you will obtain glory and honor and peace, in which God will give to each person who works for good. My brethren, let's learn to work for good because the end of all things is at hand the end of all things is at hand let's learn to do what's good what's pleasing and acceptable the will of God because then when the end will come the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins ten virgins Ten reborn. Ten people have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Ten cleansed people with the blood of Jesus Christ. Ten people who have their names written by Jesus in the book of life. And they will wait. And this is the horrible part. It's not like the wicked servant who doesn't wait because he doesn't believe because he says the Lord is delaying in coming. But this is an other circumstance. They are waiting. They say, the Lord is coming. And I went out with their lambs to meet Him. He's coming any day now. He's coming. The bridegroom is coming. Let's go and meet Him. They haven't got no doubt. But they haven't got wisdom either. It's the second category of people. They haven't got wisdom. Wisdom of God. And the word of God says, I will tell you who is the wise and who is the fool. A wise person is a person who builds his house upon the rock. In other words, it is he who hears and does. He's not a forgetful listener, but he is an executor of the word. He does whatever he can. In his weakness, whatever he can do, he does though. What does he do? He doesn't see, he doesn't sleep, he does whatever he can do. He works what the Lord has given him. 
but the fool, his, his heart does come in the right place. It opens up to the Lord. The word of God enters in his heart. It revives him, but just for a little while. Afterwards, the same things. He does his own work, his own works, his own life. He has understood how serious it is to be a doer of the work. But he is a virgin. But he is one of those who God does not know of. Because he who loves me is the one who has and keeps my commandments. And only who God loves and those who love God are known by him. God loves us, all of us, but how do we love him? The love of God brought us to the church today, but how many of us truly love Him? But do we love Him? Not with words and emotions. Do we love Him with works and truth? Do we love Him with works and truth? Do we hear the Word of God and we do it? Or at least we try to do it? And the bridegroom came. A cry was heard in the middle of the night. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. All ten, those who had slumbered as the time went by. And the wise, who did not become in that moment wise, in the time of the rapture, they were wise in all their lives. Because they heard and did. All that they could, they did. All that they could do, they did it. They had, you've got little strength. You can do little things. But at least you can keep my word and not deny my name. They did all that they could. And even though the lamps were burnt out, they put some oil in and it flared up again. The others had burnt out lamps and they remained like that. Give us, help me. A person cannot do anything. Go to those who sell, you know, my brethren who sell oil. You know, who are those who sell oil? It's the church of Christ. In here, you will buy. Come. Buy. Here, you will buy. Gold, silver, and the precious stones. And what does it say, buy? What does it say, those who sell? Because you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross if you want to follow Jesus. You must sell yourself. Yourself for this world. Outside. Your opinion, your decisions, your knowledge. So the love of Christ can come. Which surpasses any kind of knowledge. Sell it. You will despise even your own possessions, Apostle Paul said to the Hebrews, you gave your possessions because you know you got better possessions in heaven, which is better. Do you know that we've got possessions in heaven, which is better? I read it today, and what can I say? I want you to read it all so you can feel what I felt when I read it. It's in the letter. To the Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 34. In this verse, may it remain in our hearts. The Holy Spirit says in Hebrews 10, 34, For you had compassion on me in my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen, my beloved brethren. If we have such possessions in heaven, isn't it worth denying ourselves here on earth? A better, better possessions that endure. 
but the five foolish virgins went to those who, who sold oil, but they found the church closed. We're finished. The harvest has come. The end of the church, no one was there. Just a few from those who were like them, foolish, foolish. And when they returned, they found the door closed. The end. They found the door shut. Wouldn't it be horrible, my brethren? All night they were waiting. All night in the world they were waiting. All night they were waiting. All their lives they were waiting. They were waiting for the bridegroom to come so they can enter with him in the joy. But when he did come, they weren't ready. That's why, my brethren, today let's prepare ourselves. Amen. And I will repeat it. Lord, I want. I want to be faithful. I want to be wise. I want to have love. I want to have compassions. I want to do what's just. Help us. I want to love, love. I want to walk humbly with you, my Lord. I want to be just and perfect among my generation. I want to be perfect before you all. I want this. If I want this, won't the Lord give it to us? When He say to us, I'll give this to you, my children. What have we asked from the Lord and He hasn't given it to us? He, he gave us His only begotten Son. And He did not spare Him but he saw him on the cross of Golgotha to become a curse for us. And he turned his face away from the person he loved. But he did it for us. If God loves us more than Jesus, if you permit me the comparison which is foolish, do you think if I say, Lord, I want to be just, I want to be perfect, I want to walk with you, when he give it to me, when he give it to us, Hallelujah. Let's rise now and ask this from God. Let's not live today without asking for this, my brethren. For all of us to ask. For us to be just. And not only to be just, but all of us to ask to be. You. Each one of us. Just. Perfect. Walking with the Lord. To love what's just, to love mercy, and to love, to walk humbly before the Lord. Whoever is led by the Holy Spirit, 